Hi, this is Mark Berkey with Berkey Academy, and I'm going to make another video on importing data into a map in Map Window. In my video two, I showed you a quick and dirty, it's actually kind of a slow and dirty way to get some data into a shapefile. <clears throat> Those kind of messy and, and clunky. And I told you in that video that there were a couple of ways to do it. A little bit better and so in this video I'm going to quickly tell you a couple of those better ways so I'm going to call this video 2b and of course as usual if if you're new to my videos go watch the other ones but this is one I'm going to call on my uh, website here which is spatial.berkeyacademy.com um, right here GIS 2b better ways of getting data in and I'm going to show you one thing, which is just to basically uh, sort on one of your fields and save the shapefile as a new shapefile that is permanently sorted the way you want it to, so you can match your data up. Uh, another way we're going to do here is we're going to use a plugin called the Swift D plugin. And I'm going to show you how to download and install and use that. So let's get going here. Um, first, let me just show you if you have a uh, a shapefile that you want to save permanently sorted in a convenient way so that you can add data in it's not too difficult to do that so let's take this um, shapefile we've been working with uh, called lower 48 new in previous videos and uh, remember that if we uh, right click and go to the attribute table editor here remember that these uh, data in the shapefile were not in any particular order. Here's Maryland, South Carolina, and Texas at the end, so it's not in alphabetical order. It's not ordered by FIPS code or state abbreviation or state name. So one thing we could do is just sort those somehow logically, because if you open up the DBF file, remember you can't sort it when you do it that way. So you have to sort the shapefile and save a new copy. So let me show you how to do that. Uh, if we go to the Toolbox here, so we're looking at the Layers tab, go to the Toolbox tab, and you can go to the Sort Shapefile tool right here. So double-click that, and tell it which shapefile we want to sort. So we're going to select the lower 48 new. We can either sort it on state or the uh, state name or the FIPS code, whatever. Probably the state name in this case would be um, best if, if you have the full name of the states. The state field here is the abbreviation, or you could use the FIPS code, the numerical code. Let's sort it, sort it by state name, click ascending order. And then you have to give it a new file name. And so you could save it as uh, lower 48 new. Map window automatically appends this little uh, extension here, sort or sort to or whatever. Um, so you can click OK. And what that's doing is it's sorting it and it's saving a new copy of the shapefile. Do you want to add the new layer to the map? Well, actually, no, I don't because we don't want to add it to the map yet we want to uh, leave it uh, as a file that's not opened in our our map because what we want to do is be able to go now open that DBF file so let me just very quickly recreate what we did last time so I opened up my LibreOffice calc window here and then we um, can just drag our new DBF file and just hit OK here and um, now you can see that this version has been sorted by name now what we did last time is uh, before we read data in we added some fields and then we could copy the data in there so uh, let me go ahead and do that just so nobody's left out if it's been a while let's let's go ahead and close uh, this LibreOffice window Let's add it to our map. So let's click the green Add button here, and let's add that sorted sort to uh, here. Let's go back to Layers. Right-click on this new um, sorted version, Attribute Table Editor. And remember what we did is we wanted to um, add 
a new field. So we can add a new field here for, for each variable that we want to add in. And then now that this is sorted nicely, we can copy and paste that. Now, let me show you an even better way to do this. This involves uh, adding in an extra feature that doesn't come standard with map window but again it's it's a it's another free tool that someone else has made so let's close this and i'm going to uncheck this new one that we just added here there's an add-in called swift d and so let me show you uh, again on my website i have a little link so that you can um, download that here's the swift d plugin Click that link and that'll take you to where you can download the plugin. So right here, Swift DDLL. When you click that, you're going to download a zip file. And of course, you can use any kind of uh, program to open that. I prefer 7-zip. Let me show you what you'll see when you do that. So here's the little zip file on my desktop. When, when I double click it, uh, I'm using 7-zip uh, here, I think, is what's opening this up here. There are uh, two things you see. There's a little folder called Swift D, and then there's an installation help file. Well, you don't need to read that because I'll show you what to do here. Go to your, your hard drive where your uh, program files are. Um, I have the, I'm working with a 32-bit version here of Map Window on a 64-bit operating system so go to program files x86 in any case just find your map window uh, uh, installation folder wherever you installed it and right here under plugins you want to copy this swift d uh, file into plugins now make sure not to copy it into a, another folder but copy it into its uh, kind of the root of the plugins folder and i've already done that and you'll see that you have the uh, Swift D folder right here. Once you do that, if you um, and you run Map Window again, go to Plugins and click on Swift D, and then this little green thing will will light up, saying that the Swift D add-in is here. That's going to add in a few new little tools here, and um, one of them that's, that's kind of nice is this data tool that lets you add fields and things. But the one we're really interested in here is the import tool. So if you click on the import tool, this allows you to Im import D from DBF files, um, XLS files, the new Excel files, SLSX, or the uh, newer access files here. And you choose what layer you want to import into okay lower 48 new is what we've been working with let's click SLX I have an old Excel file that a, a student created in my class years ago and so uh, I'm gonna go find that uh, file here let's see okay and uh, here it is it's called abort data .xls. And here it asks you, um, it's trying to figure out which tab in the Excel file you want to import data from. Um, and you can just, if it's this tab isn't the one you want to do, click No. And uh, the one I want to import from is called Sheet 1. Yes. And this is as easy as can be. Uh, it has a list of fields in your shape file and a list of fields in your Excel file. And all you have to do first is tell it which field is it going to match rows on. And so in my um, shape file, I have a FIPS code column. In my Excel file, I have a column called FIPS code that it can match on. And now down here, uh, as easy as can be, you just tell it, uh, what column to import. You have to do it one at a time, um, but here I want to import, um, you know, say the poverty rate, add. And it warns you that for long data sets, large data sets, this is going to take a long time. Okay, just click yes, attach successfully, and click another column, urbanization index, add, yes, okay. And just keep doing that and um, this is a whole lot easier than any other method that I've found so far to bring data into a shapefile. And once we have added a few columns here, then we can close that tool. Click the close button. 
and then we can um, look at our attribute table editor here and sure enough those new columns have been added so uh, that's a much easier way to add a, a lot of data fairly quickly so if you need to add some data I uh, recommend going to try that Swift D plugin again uh, you can Google it or you can go to my website to download it which is uh, just spatial.berkeyacademy.com I look forward to sharing some other information about uh, mapping and spatial econometrics with you next time.